TCI is brought to you by Eskenderea, the most dominant three-year-old this decade. Seeing is believing at eskionthego.com. Welcome back to TCI, your inside track to the Triple Crown. I'm John Siegel alongside Joel Cunningham. Joel, we have another huge weekend of final derby preps. We have four of our top ten in action, and three of them need graded earnings just to make the derby. Well, we learned last weekend how important these graded earnings are, John, in these final preps. I mean, Mark Valeski, El Padrino stubbed their toe a little bit. Now both are in serious jeopardy of not making that derby field. So you mentioned the four running this weekend that are in our top ten. Creative cause, he's safe, but gemologist, alpha, and painter, they need to run big. Well, let's bring in our resident handicapper from brisnet.com. It's Ed DeRosa. Hey, Ed, we have a lot to talk about, so we're going to jump right in. I read on the Pollock Report, you have I'll Have Another as your number one derby horse. Are you saying he'll defeat Creative Cause in the Santa Anita Derby? Yeah, you got it. I think he'll be the right price, and I thought his comeback was fast, and he's had enough time to recover from it. I love this two-year-old form. These are the type I like on the derby trail, so I'm sticking with him. Well, let's go to New York, Ed, for the other big race of the weekend, the grade one wood. Obviously, Gemologist is a horse that you and I thought was a little suspect in his comeback. Now he's your favorite in the wood. Is that where you go in here? Uh, no, I wasn't at the wedding. I won't be at the, the funeral. So I, I looked against him. I like Maya Donis. I'm a believer in the Hanson form from the Gotham, and Maya Donis got a good number chasing him home, and it's certainly good enough to win this race, as I'm not a big believer in Alpha either. So at a big price, I went with Maya Donis. Okay, so two upsets for Ed so far. Let's talk about the Illinois Derby. This is a little different. It's just a grade three, and you have a wide open group of horses here, Ed. Who do you like in this race because the winner's going to get into the Derby? I'm starting with our entourage. I thought Todd Fletcher was fairly high on him as a two-year-old, even though he sort of made his way on the turf, which typically isn't the way Fletcher goes with his classic hopefuls. But I like the comeback for his three-year-old debut, and in a fairly inscrutable group, I'm going to stick with the trainer who's gotten it done before when traveling and Todd Fletcher and our entourage. All right, Ed, thanks for those picks, man. We're looking forward to seeing you next weekend. We have the Arkansas Derby and also the Bluegrass Stakes. Yeah, looking forward to talking to you live at Keeneland. Yeah, Joel, we'll have Ed DeRosa on the show at the Bluegrass Draw. Let's talk about this show right now, though. We have three major races to talk about. Four of our top ten in action, as we mentioned. Joel, I want to talk about Painter. Here is an impressive maiden winner. He has to step up huge and win this race just to make the derby. Well, we have to address him because he's been in our top ten since he broke his maiden. A pretty bold move for a horse that's only started once, John, for us to have in the top ten. And another bold move for Zayed and Bob Baffert. I know he's doing well, but to now step up and run him in the Santa Anita Derby, they were going to run him in the Illinois Derby. They decided to keep him home. He's been working well and reportedly doesn't van that well. So they're going to take a shot in here. And I kind of like the horse a little bit, John. The reason he made our top Top 10 to begin with was because he showed the potential to me to be any kind of right. horse out there. And I really thought with his connections and his upside that he could be one of California's best three-year-olds. We'll find out a lot about him. But look, it's a tall task to take on the likes of Creative Cause and just your second lifetime start and your first round two turns. It's asking a lot of this, Colt, but I think he's going to run huge. All right, another horse that needs the graded earnings in here is Ed's pick. I'll have another. Joey yeah. currently has 151000 He has to at least run second if he wants to keep his derby dreams alive. You know, I've never been a big believer in this, Colt, John. You know, just based on that Bob Lewis, I don't think that form was very good. Now, he was impressive. The interesting strategy for Doug O'Neill, that was in early February, and we haven't right. seen this cold since. You know, I don't know if he came out of the race just dog tired and they thought he was going to bounce and they wanted to train him up to the Santa Anita Derby. But now, like you said, he's in jeopardy with graded earnings, so he has to run well in here. I think he's going to be part of your speed, and I think Bob Baffert entered Blue Skies and Rainbows, his third horse in here, as a rabbit hmm. to maybe go after. I'll have another early. So it'll be interesting to see how that pace shakes out, and I want to see how good of a quality horse that I'll have another is because you, you heard Ed. He likes him a lot. I don't particularly like the horse so much. All right, let's move now to the Wood Memorial and stay on this theme of needing graded earnings. Joel, we see Gemologist. He's the favorite in here. He's yeah. currently number 30 on the graded earnings list. Joel, he has to run well in this race. Yeah, Gemologist is a, one of those horses we talked about that really needs the graded earnings. I mean, he has to at least run second this weekend, and that's not a given. I mean, this is a tough little race. I mean, you have horses like Alpha coming in fresh in here. I think Street Life, a local horse. I mean, this is a tough race. Maya Adonis, 
I do like Jamalaja's tactical speed. He's a deserving favorite in here. I think he had something left in the tank after his allowance win. I don't think it's going to take too much out of him, and reportedly he's worked sharp since. So I expect Jamalaja's to really love the distance, and with that tactical speed, I really think he could uh, hold a big key in this race. But let me mention one thing about the lumber guy. I think he holds the biggest key in here. I mean, he's a fast horse stretching out. If the lumber guy gets wild up front, I think that hurts Jamologist's chances from the standpoint that it'll set up a couple other late closers in here like Alpha and Street Life that could really give Jamologist problems. Well, you mentioned Street Life. There's another horse, has no graded earnings, but connections are very high on him. Yeah, Street Life's a, a horse I really like in this race, John. I've just been impressed with him since he broke his maiden. He took that forward step. You know, you might say that race was slow last time out, but if you look at him coming home in 24 seconds and running down that, that slow pace in front of him, and I really like the fact Chad Brown from the school of Bobby Frankel, the conservative training school, right. is bringing this colt back in three weeks. And if, go look at that work uh, for, for Street Life, 48 flat in between three weeks. That's a pretty crisp work. I mean, if they thought he was going to bounce, I think they would have had more of a 50-51 maintenance work in right. there uh, from that barn. I think this colt is doing very well, and if he gets that pace in front of him with the lumber guy, I really think he's going to be a force late in here. I think it's worth mentioning, too, Maya, Adonis, and Alpha, they both have to run well. They do not have enough graded earnings as it stands right it, now. This is definitely the most intriguing race and the, mo and the deepest race in terms of quality this weekend, in my opinion. All right, let's move now to the Illinois Derby. Joel, we mentioned it earlier. This race is wide open. We see Currency Swap, who is a really good two-year-old. He disappointed when he, when he faced Jamologist last time out. What do you think about his chances in here? You know, I really don't like his pedigree to get a mile and eighth. I mean, I think they're probably going to cut him loose a little more this time, let him show more of his natural speed, and that's his weapon, John. But, you know, going a mile and eighth, I just think he's more of a sprinter miler type, so I question his ability to get the distance. But this race is so wide open in here. I think Currency Swap's going to take a lot of money. Our entourage, Ed's pick, is going to take a lot of money. Pletcher won this race last year, obviously. And here's a horse that they ran on Travers Day first time out. They've been very high on this horse. He's bred for the turf, and I thought he's gotten very good trips in all of his dirt races. You right. know, certainly the Breeders for Charity was on the poly track, got a good trip in there, quit in the stretch. Same thing with the Remsen, got a good trip in there, quit in the stretch. So unless he's had a procedure or improved since then, I don't particularly like our entourage finishing up either. But this isn't a very good race. I'm interested in Armed Force. But he's second on the also eligibles, John. Right. Will they even go to Chicago, or will they just scratch out? You know, because he needs two scratches to get into the field. It's wide open. I think Morgan's Gorilla is another horse with a big shot in here. It's a very wide open group, but one of your horses is going to win and get into that derby field. Well, if it's going to be Ed's pick, he's got to win if he wants to keep those derby dreams yep. alive. Thank you so much, Joel. Thank you guys for watching. It's going to be an exciting weekend. Make sure you come back on Monday. We'll see who stays on the TCI Top 10 and who gets the graded earnings.